Hello guys and thanks me. thank you for joining me in my next video. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about this thing in the Wall Street Journal about uh, getting married in your 20s. So the Wall Street Journal has this article about how whenever it's not risky for certain types of people to get married in their 20s. Now, if you know anything about the history of marriage or people, we used to get married very young all the, forever. It's only been recently that we have not done that. So this is, this goes through and makes the case about, you know, a lot of people are waiting until their thirties because of risk of divorce and all this. But however, as we recently discovered, <laughs> There is an interesting exception to the idea that waiting until 30 is best. In analyzing reports of marriage and divorce from more than 50,000 women in the U.S. government's National Survey of Family Growth, we found there is a group of women for whom marriage before 30 is not risky. Women who marry directly without ever cohabitating prior to marriage. In fact, women who are married between 22 and 30 without first living together had some of the lowest rates of divorce. By contrast, for approximately 70% of women in our sample who cohabitated with one or more partners prior to marriage, the conventional wisdom held for them, waiting until around 30 was linked to a lower risk of divorce. So basically, if you don't sleep around, you don't live with somebody beforehand, and you get married first, and then cohabitate, and then sleep with them, things are better. So what does the Bible say to do? The Bible is very clear that marriage and sex go together. If you're not married, do not be having sex. If you're having sex, you better be married. <laughs> okay. And there's a even a third step here where in the Bible it basically says that sex is marriage. Once you start having sex with each other, and it's, you know, of course, this is not rape. This is consensual sex. You are married. That's the way God looks at it. So when you're going out, well, actually, whenever you go out and you have sex with multiple people, you are committing adultery. So, something to think about. But anyway, here is this here where it talks about that. So it says, what's going on here? For the average young adult, there's undoubtedly some merit to waiting to marry in terms of the maturity factor when considering marriage before 20, but waiting too long also has its downsides. It often means accumulating relationship baggage, including a list of exes from cohabitating unions that can weigh down their marriage once they tie the knot. The women who marry directly in their 20s are more likely to avoid picking up this baggage on the way to the altar, as are the men. This is not something that is just women do. Men who cohabitate, men who sleep around and all that, people, us people, are not meant to sleep around. <laughs> We're meant to get married. If that's, if, if what's inside you is that I want to procreate and all this stuff, then your answer is marriage. It's not sleeping around. It's not finding out how many people you can just live with for a while. The idea that cohabitation is risky is surprising. Not if you know anything. <laughs> like, not if you've read the Bible. I'll say it that that way. Given that a majority of young adults believe that living together is a good way to pre-test the quality of your partner and your partnership, thereby increasing the quality and stability of your marriage. But that's wrong because you're, what you're doing is playing at marriage. And whenever, and because you're not actually married, you can just leave, which trains you to leave as soon as it gets hard. But a growing body of research indicates that Americans who live together before marriage are less likely to be happily married and more likely to land in divorce court. <laughs> of course they are. In looking at the marital history of thousands of women across the U.S., we found that women who cohabitate were 15% more likely to get divorced. However, Stanford's study indicates that the risk is especially high for women who cohabitate with someone besides their future husband. They were more than twice as likely to end up in divorce court. About this pattern, the psychologist Galena Rhodes of the University of Denver observes, we generally think we generally think that having more experience is better, but what we find for relationships is just the opposite. Having more experience is related to having a less happy marriage later on. One reason her research suggests 
is that a previous cohabitation may give husband and wives experience with breaking up from serious co-residential relationships, making them more likely to head for the exit when the going gets tough. This is something that Christianity says all the time. When things get rough and tough, you don't just leave. It, marriage is for life. You don't leave. There are ways to deal with the things that are rough and tough. There are ways that you can change. You and this person can change together with God, but you don't leave. And right now we have a group of young men and women who just, if you don't treat me the way I think you should, I'm leaving. If you don't live up to what God says to do, I'm leaving. If you don't do this, I'm leaving. Like if this were, if this was the way God wanted things, we would never get married. Because men, because guys, people are not perfect. They never will be. If you go into marriage thinking someone is this perfect person and they're going to do everything that they're supposed to do all the time, you're lying to yourself. Okay. I've been married. Oh my gosh. I love I've been married. Whew, let's see. At least 12 years now. Neither one of us have been a perfect person doing what we're supposed to do all the time. We haven't spoken to each other properly all the time. We haven't treated each other properly all the time. We've, we haven't told the truth to each other all the time. Like this is not, excuse me. And I mean, we believe in these precepts and stuff, but we also know going in, this is not a perfect person. This is why divorce is a uh, no it's for Christians because we know going in, this person is not perfect. They are going to hurt me. They are going to do things that are not like what we consider good or whatever. Marriage is, is very good and easy if you can, if you have a system to follow. And so when I was wrong or he was wrong or we did something that we shouldn't have, we had a system to follow to come back together again. Okay. When you don't have that, whenever you are just living to see, well, let's see if we can get along together in the same house. There's no system to follow. There's no promise there. There's nothing. So whenever you go and you actually get married, it just seems like the same thing. And so again, you have no system to follow. It just seems like you live together like people who like uh, roommates and that's not what this is marriage is so 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 much more than that and it's very very not roommates and not just something you can just leave it's very important who you marry because of that as well in professor Rhodes' estimation having a history with other cohabiting partners may also make them compare their spouse critically to previous partners in ways that make them discount their husband or wife that right there is also true okay and this is what I told my you when I was working with the youth this is what I told them you're gonna go out there and have multiple partners and what you're gonna do is you will remember them for the rest of your life this is not something that these people don't just go away they're in your head for the rest of your life and you will compare your spouse to this other person when I was young and first in my marriage I did that twice the first time I didn't even realize I was doing it. And the second time I caught myself and I was like, no, because I had sort of off and on lived with the guy before my husband. Okay. This thing here <clears throat> is very real. This person that you had before your husband is not going to be someone who just goes away. You're used to them. Now you've got to get used to your husband. You know what I'm saying? And I hadn't been with this other guy for years and I'm still showing, you know, in myself being like, okay, well, that's not what I'm used to, even though I hadn't been with this other guy for years and years beforehand. So that's something that's true. This is something I try to share with young people. You don't need to be doing this living together thing. Don't have sex before marriage. Wait and wait. Sorry, Kitty's here. Hi, Soul Patch. What you doing? Yeah, hi. He doesn't care that I'm recording a video. <laughs> so that's true. Just from my own experience, from experience, from talking to other people. 
says your husband David may be a responsible and reliable partner, but not as funny as Will or good lover as Nate to other men you live with prior to marriage. Keeping such critical comparisons in mind once you're married can be corrosive. Exactly. Because then you're thinking, well, maybe I can find somebody that's a mix of all three. You can't. Okay, mar stay married to the one you're married to and make that work. Another theory was articulated by a newly married 20-something couple, Joey and Samantha Paris, who live in Dallas. They met in New York um, and surprised everybody by getting married at 24 without first living together. From Joey's vantage point, cohabitation often made his friends in finance more jaded about their relationship after they married. I think that part of the allure of marriage has lost its luster because in their eyes they can get all the benefits of marriage outside of marriage, he said. Asking one friend who cohabitated before marriage, how's it feel now? He said, I'll be honest, it's not that different. He's like, I don't get what the hype is about marriage. <clears throat> so, this is the other thing also about all this. Kitty wants outside, I'm sorry. This is the other thing about all this is that marriage is a special thing. Marriage is a dedication. So whenever you treat it like it's nothing, divorce rates are going to go up. Heartbreak is going to go up. Because you, we, I think we intrinsically know it's supposed to be something more. And that's why he's like, I don't get it. I thought there was supposed to be this big thing. That's because you're just treating it like living together. Okay. And that is what you will do if you just live together first. There's no, it's just, I just, uh, this is stuff, this is, this, these are concepts that are in the Bible. These are concepts that have been taught by Christianity for, I don't, for forever. You marry first. You do not live together. Things like that. Ugh. We don't precisely, we don't know precisely why young women who marry directly in their 20s without cohabiting have comparatively low divorce rates. But you just explain it. Like, this is kind of what I hate about these kind of things. These writers don't want to alienate anybody. So I was like, well, we don't really know why. Is it less experience breaking up, fewer previous partners for comparison, a greater sense that marriage is a different relationship status, or the fact that such women are disproportionately religious? It's not clear. What's clear is this. If you're a young woman thinking about getting married but worried about divorce, our research suggests that you need not wait until you're 30, so long as you found a good partner and don't move in with anyone until after your wedding day. So basically, basically according to this, these studies, they've now proven what Christianity has said all along. If you're, you do not need to cohabitate. You do not need to have sex beforehand. You guys need to get to know each other and then get married and then cohabitate and have sex. Okay. This is a very clear, like this has been true for centuries. And the thing about all of this new stuff Everybody tries to change it and be like, well, maybe we can do it this way. Maybe we can do it this way. No, there's a reason these things have worked for as long as they have. Well, anyway, guys, that's all I've got for today. Remember to pray and read your Bible. And sometimes, and I mean, if you can find this stuff, guys, this is practical Christianity right here. This is showing why and how it works. All right, I got to I got to stop talking because I can talk about this all day. Remember to pray and read your Bible. And thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.